you get more than just warm up size this gym um, go practice today? He needs it. Yeah, he did some some individual. Did you get a better feel for where he's at, or he's still? Yeah, I think we'll we'll see how he responded today or tomorrow, and have a better idea. Matt, when you look at when you look at the Saints defense, um, what what stands out to you? What makes these guys so tough? Fast, physical, aggressive, very sound. They're going to challenge you on all three levels. Uh, Demario Davis is a is a game wrecker, Cam Jordan. They got guys that at all at every level and they've got complementary pieces around them. Obviously Lattimore, uh, Honey Badger. I mean they got a ton of players on that defense and they challenge you. They are going to to their guys on the perimeter. They're gonna grab and hold and, and that's what they do. But they play aggressive. And you gotta be very fundamentally sound up front. You gotta do a great job of coming off the ball and playing with great pad level. Um, because they are a physical bunch and they play with extreme effort. And when you get effort plus scheme plus talent, you have one of the best defenses in the National Football League. With Thomas healthy now and Derek Carr in there, what kind of threat, and Olave back obviously, what kind of threat do they provide with their vertical passing game for your defense? Yeah, they've got multiple players. And then Jennings and, uh, I mean, they got a lot of guys. I think Carr can sling it. And he's been doing it for years. And he's going to give his guys opportunities. So. Um, definitely have a lot of explosive pieces that you, we, we need to make sure that um, we limit those explosive uh, attempts. When you're talking about their aggressiveness, is, is that schematic too? Or is it just play style? Or is it a combination? Of I think it's both? both. I think it's both. Even when they're calling, you know, they may be calling their, their three match or three deep or whatever. Um, they're still going to get up in your grill and challenge you. So it's it's a... They're a confident group, and they got talent, and um, they play extremely hard. And they play well together. Matt, I know you could do this later in the week, but the fact that you guys didn't IR uh, Elton, does that mean you guys are, are hopeful that he's maybe week to week and you've got a chance that he won't be gone for a long time? Or Yeah, I'd say so. How's Aaron Jones progressing? <clears throat> I think he's coming along well, um, but we'll we'll see. Not an injury question on this one, but with the Thursday game coming up, how do you do? You have to structure practices differently this week, and how, how does I guess how do you weigh the importance of this week with you know the short week that's ahead? Yeah, I, I think there's a um, there's definitely some thought to that. We've got a very similar week that we had a week ago. Um, you know, we took a little bit off the back half of practice today similar to last week, just from a volume perspective, knowing what we what lies ahead. Um, and those are tweaks you make throughout the course of the season, but nothing too drastic, I would say. Matt, how have you um, adjusted the volume of plays or what's in your playbook to account for having Wicks, Heath, um, even Jaden Reed, I guess, to some degree. Uh, can you throw everything out there and they, they know it, or do you have to be a little bit, you know, you know, bring them along each week, add something more each week? Yeah, I think it varies week to week. I think a lot of it is scheme dependent. Uh, certainly, um, you know, there's a similar scheme that we played last week, which is helpful in terms of maybe some stuff that you had in the plan that you didn't call the week before. There's a little bit of carryover. You may dress it up a little bit differently, but conceptually uh, that helps. But yeah, every week's a little bit different in terms of what you feel like. You wanna go in there with enough ammo where you feel like you can move the ball down the field and score points. So that's the goal every week. And um, I'd say it might be a, a little bit scaled back from years past, um, you know? And I thought, I, I do think that we did a decent job of laying a pretty good foundation, throwing a lot of stuff at these guys throughout the course of OTAs and training camp. Just a lot of concepts that we, you know, you always want to try to plan ahead for what you think you may use during the season. Um, and so we threw a lot at these guys and, you know, they, they were able to function. So, um, but that's always a, a tricky deal. I would say each and every week kind of scheme dependent on what, what you're going to see.
Matt, how did you think you run blocked as a unit on Sunday? And, and if you weren't overly happy with it, how much better do you have to be this, this week? Yeah, it's, that's an area where, it, and it's not just the run blocking. I would say it's, it's really all 11. Um, you know, making sure that our backs are on, on track with their aiming points. Um, wideouts are, are doing their part in the run game. Quarterback doing his part, whether it's faking a keeper, whatever it may be. So um, there's a lot of shoot as a play caller, giving our guys opportunities to have productive runs. I mean, shoot, we ran a toss into a, a nickel pressure off the edge and we lose four yards. So I, I can't fault anybody else other than myself on that, you know. Uh, so I would say collectively, everybody needs to be better. Matt, are you excited to finally get a game here at home? I mean, a few weeks into the season. Yeah, yeah. it's par for the course the last few years. Just wait a couple weeks before you get home. And uh, no, there's no better place to play in in the National Football League. And I, I said that even before I was here. I think this is the best, uh, you know, venue in all of sports. I, I love playing here. Uh, I love feeling the support from our fans and hopefully they show up and are and show out for us on Sunday so and we'll feed off that energy. And what kind of bounce back do you expect from your defense this week? Well, I mean, it's that is the National Football League and um, we we have to play better in order for us to have an opportunity to win against a, a team that's coming in here 2 and 0 a good really good football team. You said you're going to talk about uh which can how you're going to play Solomon. I assume you're not going to tell us who's starting a left guard here, but when you have a guy like Zach, does it at least give you the possibility of getting the, the best five? Does it help in that regard? Yes. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to ask it back. But yeah. <laughs> you, you said the best, Bill. Best five, man. Matt, you, you said you didn't want to put at the start of camp even expectations on Jordan. And I, we've talked about how level headed he is and the leadership. But, how do you view how he played in the first two games? I mean, I, I know you don't want to have expectations, but if he did have some, did he exceed them just with how, or did he play just the way you expected him to? It's a very good question, Jason. Um, I, I do think that he's played how we've expected him to play. Uh, you never quite know until, until they get out there, but the thing that's been so impressive to me is just how he's played in terms of the poise that he's shown, the confidence. I can see his confidence growing every time he gets out there. And I'm sure there's going to be, there's going to be some adversity. And there was last week. Um, that's just the nature of this game. And it's all about how you respond. But I've been super impressed with how he's done, um, just in terms of leading our team, leading our offense, and the poise he's shown and command. Saying it was how, this is how, what you expected. What did you see in him beforehand that made y'all believe he could be this poised once he got here? Well, we see it every day in practice, and we've been seeing it for a couple of years now, just his practice habits and how he goes out there. And quite frankly, I, I know um, just thinking back to last training camp, last preseason, I know the numbers. That's why you, don't, you can't get too infatuated, in my opinion, with numbers. It, it's the process of how how a guy's going up going out there and performing like decision making his his timing in the passing game the accuracy and and not to it's it's never going to be perfect there's always going to be plays you want back but um i thought i thought he had a really good process a year ago two more please so you can't get infatuated with numbers he's thrown six touchdowns no picks I think he had one ball that was in peril, right? The pick that probably should have been made last week in Atlanta. But his completion percentage is around 55%. Why, why do you think that is when everything else has looked as good as it has? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of reasons could be for that. Um, whether it's, there's, I can think back two weeks ago when we had, you know, a strike that I thought was coming open and we, we had a mistake up front in protection where you're getting hit. Um, it could be some of the concepts that we're calling. Or we've, we've taken a few more, I would say, not necessarily shots, but down the field throws, which are going to be lower percentage. It's just if you hit them, you, they're explosive plays. So I, I think there's a multitude of reasons. It's not never one thing. Um, but 
you know, I, I think for, for the most part, he's thrown the ball pretty accurately and he's, he's made really good decisions and he's playing within the timing of, of the offense. Are, are the arm angles that he's thrown from um, different, surprising, or is that something he's shown from the beginning? Yeah, he's been doing that more and more. Um, sometimes I love it, sometimes I don't. But uh, that's just, I think that's just part of the process of learning and, and uh, you know, playing quarterback, seeing what you can do. And um, I know this, he, he's, he's in a really good headspace. I think he's confident. I think his teammates are confident in him. And shoot, that gives naturally that gives me a lot of confidence. So um, I know we've got a lot of belief in him, and I think he's going to continue to get better and better and better, especially as those around him get more comfortable in our offense and perform better. That last ball to Toure, one you liked or didn't like? Oh, I, I, that was awesome. I mean, that was a you talk about changing your arm angle, and he was not open in the timing of the play, but he had pressure in his face. Um, uh, that was a big time throw. Uh, there's, there's only a handful of guys, in my opinion, that can make that throw. And what was so impressive of that throw was when you see, if you see and paused it, where Samori was, where the, the defender was when he was about to get hit, and just the pace that he took off the ball, I, I thought that was big time. He's up. Let's, I can see from her off, Jason. Right, so, uh, okay. Um, he, he's played aggressively. It seems like you know, we've seen a lot of young quarterbacks around the league. When, you know, when they're young, they're, it seems like they're almost afraid, right? And they just kind of check it down or dink it and dunk it. Um, is that just his mindset, or have you been encouraging him to play with that kind of attacking attitude? No, just tell him to, to try to read it true, read with your feet, and you know, go, where the ball, where, go with the ball wherever the read dictates.